Hi, welcome to the Crafts Channel. My name's Corinne Brad, and today I want to show you some mixed media techniques. Because uh, it's one of those things, if you're a crafter and you do all manner of crafts, you will end up with a house full of stuff, you know, random things that you don't really know how to put together. And what I've discovered is that if you can colour those things, you can really pull them together to make some great, quite eclectic design ideas like this journal cover, like a little decoration for a cupboard door, needle case, and these have all been done using indigo blues um, acrylic paints which work on pretty much any surface. They are especially good as fabric paints because they don't bleed too much, they're quite viscous but you can wash them down. They work on paper, they work on newsprint, they work on wood, and they are so heavily pigmented that you, even if you water them down quite a lot to get like a spread on it like we have here on this canvas, you've still got a high degree of colour. And they're washproof, as I know to my cost. And can I just suggest that if you're going to do a mixed media project, you don't wear a white shirt. So I'm going to start with showing you how to do the embossed printed cover of a journal. So, I've got myself here a piece of old sheet. Now this is old flannelette sheet, well worn old flannelette sheet, but it's a nice weight cotton. I've got an embossing folder, which is a letterpress style. I'm going to mix up some paint. Now if you don't have a paint palette, Indigo Blue have this great idea which I found on their website, which is basically one of these plastic document folders with a sheet of white paper inside it and you can simply grab yourself some pop-up pink and you don't need a lot of pigment but just put it onto your working sheet grab some water and just water it out a bit And then if you grab a piece of old kitchen sponge and gather as much of that paint up on the sponge as you can and then what you want to do with your embossing folder so that you've got the design you're looking at the front on design you want to ink up the top half of that embossing folder and gather up as much of that paint as you can. And it doesn't have to be a completely even spread of that paint. What I would try and do is just go over it to try and get away, you know, try and remove any hard lines from your sponge. And then place your piece of cotton inside your embossing folder. Lay it down and sandwich it between the plates of your normal die cutting machine. So then when you peel it off, you have a raised image with your pink background. Now then what you can do is if you get yourself a different colour paint, let's go for this green. Just make sure I've got all of the pink out of my brush before I do this, otherwise it's going to turn brown. Nice bit of lime green. Slightly diluted, but not a great deal. and then a clean piece of sponge. And again, just tamp it over some areas 
of your work to add a little bit of extra colour. And then what you can do is just add a tiny amount of this, this deep teal. This is a teal for two. Just so you've got a little bit of depth to that green that you've put on there. Now the trick to any kind of colouring project is knowing when to stop. I do have a bit of an issue with that. I don't always know when to stop. But if you're enjoying that, if you think, oh, there's too much white there, I want it to be darker, then yeah, certainly darken it up. But if you're looking for a, a lighter coloured journal cover, something that's quite feminine almost, less colour is more. You, you, the, the strength of the colour with these paints is so good that you don't need to keep layering it up and layering it up and layering it up. But while on the subject of layering it up, what I do just want to show you is a technique because with this, this raised surface now, if you were to put that, if you were to iron it, you would lose the texture. But the strength of the cotton sheet that is on there is so good, that will hold that texture. So you've got a really nice tactile feel to it. But if you wanted to then rubber stamp on top of it, you've not got a flat surface to stamp on. So what I would suggest you do is if you grab yourself some natural tissue paper, and I will just use a cutting mat for this. Natural tissue paper. Um, let's find ourselves a nice rubber stamp. and a decent black permanent ink. Stamp out your design onto the tissue paper. Ideally, you want to wait for that design to dry before you do this step. But if you can't wait, just make sure you don't put your thumb over it to smudge it. And I would tear your tissue so you don't have any hard edges. And as you can see, do make sure that you've put your tissue paper on a surface that it doesn't matter if it's marked because the ink will bleed through it. Oh, that's getting quite close to the line there, hold on. Like so. And then if you paste your tissue paper, paste it on the reverse with a little bit of dilute PVA. Get it good and wet. Lift it with your brush. and then lay it onto your work. Oh. And as I say, because the tissue paper is so absorbent, you can then just tamp it down with a PVA loaded brush and work that tissue into all the indentations on your embossed fabric. So you can still see that lettering below the surface of it. And once that PVA dries, it will stick it in place so you've got a perfectly printed image on an uneven surface. And then obviously what you can then do is if you've used a natural colour tissue like I have, you can just sort of blend out the edges of it. If you used a white tissue, you would probably find it would disappear completely. But I quite like this. It's almost like a brown paper packaging. And you can blend it into your design with just a little bit more colour. Now 
Now this is going to be really strong because I'm not diluting this down at all. But I'm just going to... Oh, that is really strong. I am going to dilute that down quite a bit with a sponge. Just to knock that back a bit. But that's the great thing about a water-soluble paint with a high pigment is a lot of the times if you, if you do projects like this and you put too much colour on something, that's it, you've had it. But with this, you can knock it back with water, especially on an absorbent surface. So it can tone in really well. And the paint is not just good for fabric and tissue. I mean, there's numerous chipboard blanks out there on the market that you can buy to fix over your printed and coloured designs, just with a little bit of PVA. And painting onto these um, what are they, plywood, plywood shapes, is a very simple affair. Um, work with the grain of your wood for the best results. And if you want a very strong colour, use an undiluted indigo blue acrylic. And while the paint is still wet, you can then, if we've still got some paint left on our painting sheet here, just add a little bit of darker colour to it. Because this is it, in real life when you see things, they're not always one flat colour. There's light and shade. And because of the pigment quality in these paints, you can layer over the top of them with a really dilute version of the paint and you're still getting a good strong colour. Right, let's just um, pop him on the corner there. And really what you want to do is you do want to wait for your paint to dry before you start manipulating and manoeuvring things. But as you can see, the paint is what pulls together all of the different elements, all of the different substrates that you're using, like wood and paper and card and fabric. And suddenly you've got another use for all those bits and pieces that have been sitting around your house and you don't quite know what to do with them. But I will just say again, it works really well on fabric. I mean, this is a canvas that actually Indigo Blue produce themselves. I've seen some great examples of this painted on their website. I've gone for a, a paler option, a more subtle option, because I thought, you know what, I've got something quite bright here with my heart and feathers. And I've got something that's, I don't like the term grungy, because it's not grungy, but it is, I don't know, I just love the colour. I love the depth of colour in it. So what I'll do is I will put a link to Indigo Blue's website in the description below, so you can have a look at their products themselves. I mean, they don't just do paints, they do um, blanks, um, I believe they do rubber stamp sets. There's all kinds of things in their shop and they're all very attractive, arty products that you will want to buy. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that's given you a reason to dig out your die cutting machine and embossing folder again. Um, please come back and see us again very, very soon because we put a video up pretty much every week and there's all kinds of disciplines. There is things like this, there is sewing, there's paper crafting, there's crochet, anything else we can think of really, and it's always good to hear your comments. So if you subscribe, then what we can do is we can put a notification up every time we've got a new demonstration coming up. I will leave you now. Um, keep safe and we'll see you next time. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.